Welcome to the House of Truth. This week we're talking about how to be led by the Spirit. It's, um, we, we've, we talked before about that Spirit-led life, and the Spirit is always going to lead you from glory to glory, become more and more like Yeshua, which is going to cause you to become more obedient to the things of the Torah, but, or the law. But, we, but how exactly are, is, are you led by the Spirit? What's that look like? How's that operate? We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna look at those things today. John 16, 13 through 14, where we'll begin. How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. We shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He will show you things to come. He shall, glor he shall glorify me, for your seed of mine shall show it unto you. Okay, so let's notice some things about this here. The Spirit of truth, first of all, is going to guide you or lead you into what? All truth. Okay. So, so the Spirit of truth is leading you into something in particular. And that truth can be about, well, we'll see if it can be, but ultimately, He's going to lead you to all truth. But, but notice, he's not going to speak for himself. But he's going to speak whatever he hears from the Father and the Son. And notice, he'll speak to you. And he will show you things to come. And lastly, he's going to glorify Yeshua. So, that's, th those are all key fundamental things under how the spirit of truth. But the, the big takeaway is he's going to guide you, lead you into all truth. So let's look at this a little bit more about being led by the spirit. Romans 8, 4, 8, 14. For as many as are led by the spirit, they are the sons of God. If we're children of God, we should be being led by the spirit. In Galatians 5, 18. But if you're led by the spirit, you're not under the law. Again, we looked at this before. We, we, what Paul means by under the law, and in this context, he doesn't mean you're not under obedience to the law. Sin is transgression of the law. The Spirit's not going to lead you into transgression of the law. He's not gonna, you mean you're not, un, you're not under the curse for transgressing the law. Spirit of truth is going to lead you into obedience to the things written in the law, even if you don't know about them. Not going to lead you into disobedience. The spirit of truth will never lead you into sin. Okay, so how does the spirit of truth lead us? Well, the spirit. We're going to start. We're going to start at the very core of this right here. It manifests in various ways, but here's how. Here's the root of how it works. Acts, I mean Proverbs twenty through twenty-seven. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. All right. So, so the spirit of man. Is what the Lord uses to reveal things to the man. In the inward parts of the belly, this is like saying our heart, like I love somebody with my heart. We're not talking about our thing that pumps blood. We're talking about the center of our being. And it, searches, it, searches the, it searches out the, the center of our being. So, the, so the, the spirit is what the, the spirit, that part of you where you don't know why you know things sometimes. You can't give a rational reason, but it's still true, is what's used. Now, Romans 8, 16 verifies this. The spirit itself witnesses with our spirit that we are the children of God. So it's spirit to spirit communication. The root of it, the spirit is speaking to our spirit because that's how the Lord speaks to us at the most fundamental level. Okay, in, the, in 1 Corinthians 2, 11 through 14, Paul expounds upon this some more. What, sh what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man which is in him? Even so the things of God knows no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things we also which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, 
comparing spiritual with spiritual. And the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God. They are foolishness to him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Okay. All right. So the things of God, the Spirit, a man cannot know in of himself. Just like no one else can know what, know what I'm thinking. My spirit know, know, knows, knows what I'm thinking. We, our brain is on our mind. Our brain is an interface, interface for, for our mind to work through into the physical world. So, the spirit of the, the spirit we got that we received is from God. Why? So we know the things are free given to us of God because the spirit of God knows the things that God knows. So therefore, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost is going to teach us what comparing spiritual things to spiritual things. It's not going to teach us. Not not, not going to teach. Not going to teach us about natural things necessarily. So we're not going to teach us carnal things. That is to say, things of the flesh. But the but the Spirit of God is going to teach us about spiritual things. In a natural man, the man cannot receive things of the Spirit of God. They're foolishness. If you don't have the Spirit of God in you, you cannot receive the things from the Spirit. There's no connection there. You don't have that connection of your spirit to his spirit. And lastly, because they are spiritually discerned. Which brings to the next thing. So, so now I got kind of a, a base foundation of how the spirit operates. We're going to look, uh, look a little deeper into the spiritual discern business. We're going to look at some examples here. Acts 8, 20 through 23. And Peter said unto him, Your money perish with you, because you have thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money, which the gift of God in this case was the ability to lay hands on people and then receive the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit in context here. Thou shalt ha- thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. For your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent therefore of thy wickedness, and pray, God, that perhaps the thought of your heart be forgiven you. For I foresee that, that you are in the heart and the in the gall of bitterness, and in the bond of iniquity. Okay. Notice Peter says, I perceive. And so this so this up here above. In co- reading context, well, yeah, I could see that. Well, that's pretty obvious. But here's what he receives that what's going on with the man. Remember, the man, no one knows whether it's a man but his own spirit. But God knows. He, and he, he discerned his spirit. So he doesn't say the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He doesn't say I had a vision I um, or, any, or anything like that. He, he perceived it without explanation of how he knew. Yeah, we're going to look at another example of this, Acts 10, 34 through 35. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but every nation, him that fears him, works righteous, accepted of him, with him. Okay, and in context here, Peter, this is, this, the baptism of the Holy Spirit has just been poured out in Cornelius and his friends. But here's the thing. If you, go, if, you go look, if you go look in the Tanakh, the Old Testament, Several times, God says he was not a respecter of persons. There was blinders over Peter's eyes from traditions of men. So this, so but, but he perceived this truth, this spiritual truth that was already written down through the Holy Spirit. When it all, it all clicked in his brain suddenly. Acts 27, 9 through 11. There's another example of this. Now, when much time was passed and when selling was now dangerous, because the fast was already passed, Paul admonished them and said to them, Sirs, I foresee that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, with the lightning but lightning in the ship but of our own lives. Nonetheless, the centurion believed the master in ownership more than those things which were spoken by Paul. See, here's the thing. Paul again perceived. He didn't have a dream, a vision, an angel visit him. He perceived in his spirit, that Holy Spirit talking to his spirit. And the thing is, Paul wasn't Paul wasn't a ship captain, wasn't a sailor. 
he wasn't any of those things. And this and the centurion, not being spiritually discerning, believed the master of the ship. Guys, there was no natural explanation how Paul could know better than the, than the captain of the ship. So we're going to look a little bit more in some other ways. The Holy Spirit, how the Holy Spirit goes about, how the Holy Spirit goes about communicating to us, leading us, some more ways. But this is this is that which is spoken by the prophet Joel, and the this and this and this is baptism of the Holy Spirit. They start speaking in other tongues. That, that and it shall come to pass in the last day, says God. I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaids, I'll pour out in those days my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Okay. We'll, we'll look at this a little bit. But remember, the prophesy, the spirit has to speak to someone. You're not just doing this out of your own head. But mostly, but also, the Holy Spirit will, will lead us through visions. And the old men will dream dreams. And it, this kind of, that, actually, it's kind of a, a two-sided si two thing, kind of like speaking in tongues was, as we saw before. There's a public side and a private side. They'll, everyone has dreams at night, but not everyone has dreams from dreams that come from God, from the spirit of from the spirit of truth, from the Holy Spirit, the Rock Hakadesh. But they also doesn't just mean dreams yet. We have something, but also people will use the expression, "I have a dream to do such and such." But when men get old, they tend to quit having dreams. The Holy Spirit will give you a dream. That's from that's from Yah, from God, the Father. And not only would give it to you, he'll help you bring to pass. So communicates through dreams and visions. We're gonna look at a couple examples of this. Acts 10, 10 through 14. And this is Peter. And this is Peter it's talking about. When he became hungry and would have eaten, and while he made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven open, a certain vessel was sitting upon them. As it began, as it had been a great sheet at the four corners and let down to the earth, where were all mere four footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I've never eaten anything as common or unclean. So, Peter, Peter has a strange. But note, he has this strange vision, but notice, he fell into a trance. This is a vision. If you a little further down, you'll actually, it's actually called a vision. So the Holy Spirit's trying to communicate something to him about a vision. And if you read the whole thing, you find it has nothing to do with food at all. Because Peter says, God showed me, not but through this vision, not to call him man unclean. That is to say that beyond saving. As they thought the Gentiles were. So one way to communicate is through a vision. And then likewise, we're looking at Paul, we're going to look at Acts 16, 6 through 10, and it's with Paul. Now, when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia, were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. Then, then after they came, they were coming to Messiah, they seemed to go in Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered him not. They passing by Messiah came down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. After he'd seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia. Assure, assuredly, gathered that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. So, all right, one thing I want you to notice the Holy, the Holy Spirit. Forbade them, said wrong answer. When they wanted to go, when they wanted to go to Asia, and when they wanted to go to Bethania. So the Holy Ghost, was, the Holy the Holy Spirit will tell you no. Sometimes, part of that leading is nope, not this way, nope, not that way. And then when Paul gets down the trail, he's, he's at the ocean. I mean, he's at the coast, and he's probably thinking, well, where am I supposed to go? 
But Paul had a vision at, at, in the night, and in, in the Tanakh, the Old Testament, that for a vision of the night is used interchangeable with a dream. So Paul had a dream, the Holy Spirit directed him through a dream. Okay, now we're going to look at another way. We're, 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 we're going to look at this thing about this, a little, bit, a little bit more about the Holy Spirit speaking to us. 1 Kings 19, 11 through 13. This is Elijah speak. This is a lot. This. Oh, this is the Lord speaking to Elijah. I'm sorry. Go forth and stand before the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. For the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. So when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering of the cave. Behold, there came a voice to them and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? Okay, some important things to know. In this passage, Elijah, Elijah has he had he has big showdown with, 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 with the prophets of Baal, and Jezebel says he's gonna kill him, and he ran out to Mount Horeb. Which is which the Bible tell, which is the other place that tells us is also the same as, Sin, as, Sin, as Mount Sinai, where the Torah was given, and he's basically hanging out there, whining about how, how, how no one uh, no one wants to follow God and he's the only one and yada yada yada. So he's alone out here. In other words, when he's alone, it's not. It's just a still. It comes to him as a still small voice. And, and we know that Elijah recognized that still small voice because he wrapped his face in his mantle. No man shall see God and live. So he wrapped his face to cover his face up because, because you know, just in case. But, but there is no indication in the story that he ever actually saw anyone. But the voice was there. The voice of the Holy Spirit. And it was still and small. Now, in other cases, like in Acts chapter 2, there's tongues of fire and it was loud. There was that. There was that mighty rushing wind. So, so here's the thing. Here's the thing about that. You look at the cases where, if you look at the case like the still small voice here and stuff, that's when people are in their own private private prayer time when they're away from other people. So, so those spectacular things occur as a sign to unbelievers usually, or to get to get people's attention. You know, pay attention. God has a really has a message for you here. So, but when, but it's just you and you and the Lord, mono and mono. The Holy Spirit's going to speak to you in a still small voice. And that's why it's so important for you to get quiet, spend time in that, spend time in the shadow, spend time in the quiet spot under the shadow of His wing. Go to a mountain. Go go to go to a, a, a closet and pray, as Yeshua said. Which may, in some people's cases, be a literal closet, like in the movie War Room. Or, or going to a garden like Yeshua did. He often went away, even even in the Garden of Gethsemane. He went. He put himself. He put a, he put a stone's throw from him and the disciples. In those cases, Yah's not going to show up. Generally, as a big fire and everything. He's not trying to. He's not trying to get. Not, those are usually witnesses to the unbeliever. He's going to talk to you in a still small voice. That's where you got to get where it's quiet, where you can hear it. Ezekiel. 3, 24 through 27. Then the Spirit entered me and set me on my feet and spake with me and said to me, Go, shut yourself within your house. But thou, son of man, behold, thou shalt put bands upon thee and shall bind thee, upon, and bind thee with them. And thou shalt not go out among, thou shalt not go out among them. And I will, make, I will make your tongue cleave to the roof of your mouth. And thou shalt, not, and thou shalt be dumb. And shall not be reproved to them, for they are a rebellious house. But when I speak with you, I will open your mouth, and you shall go out to them. Thus saith the Lord, and you shall say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, He that hears, let him hear, and he that forbears, let him forbear, for they are a rebellious house. Okay, notice the Spirit of God spoke to him. And he told him all these things were going to happen, because why? They, he, was, he, he says, all right, then I'm going to listen, so I'm going to make it where you can't talk. 
as a sign to them that they were a rebellious house. And then at, at a certain point, he's going to open his mouth. He's going to open his. He's going to speak to him. And open his. He's, He'll speak to him again, and when he does, he'll open his mouth. And he's already told him what to say. And he that hears, let him hear. But he that forbears means he that refuses to hear, let him refuse to hear. Why? For they're a rebellious house. So, this is referring to Israel. Okay, so we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna look at this here. A little bit more about this speaking. And the Spirit of the Lord fell upon me and said to me, Speak, thus saith the Lord. Oh, Ezekiel 11.5, I'm sorry. And this, thus saith the Lord, Thus have you said, O house of Israel, for I know the things that come into your mind, every one of them. All right, but that's the process. The, the Spirit of the Lord fell on him. All right, connect, connect, uh, relationships established, connection. We got a connection here. The Spirit of the Lord said to him, then he spoke. So that's how pro that's prophesying how it works. The Spirit of the Lord speaks to you, something to say to other people. Then you say what the Spirit of the Lord says. If you got the gift of prophecy, that's how it works. All right, Matthew. Now, next, we're, we're going to go into this hearing business a little bit deeper that he referred to. But, but this having ears to hear. Because the soul, the soul, it doesn't know good spirit any good to speak if you can't hear the, the voice of the Holy Spirit. So we're going we're to look at what caused people to hear or not hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Matthew 13, 13 through 16. Therefore I said, I speak, in, I speak to them in parables because they, they seeing, see not. And hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, Hearing you shall hear and see and shall understand. You shall see and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes, they have clothes. So anytime they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears. They should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. But bless the your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. And the last part he's saying to the, the disciples. Okay. And you look at this in Isaiah. In some sort of, you know, try to use this predestination thing, which came from idolatry, by the way. This is like like the three fates of the Greek myths. You go look at it in there, you find the reason why their, their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes are, are closed is because they have developed their own traditions, the predecessors of the Pharisees. They developed their own traditions, and whatever didn't fit in their box, they don't, they will not hear it, they will not see it. So, the ears that cannot hear are the ones that refuse to hear. The ones that cannot see are the ones that couldn't, they, they refuse to see. When the eyes that cannot see, they're the ones that refuse to see when the Spirit of God's doing. But those who are following Yeshua, those who are seeking after him, they have eyes that see, see and ears to hear. Yah's promise to us is, if we'll seek him with all our heart, we'll find him. They don't hear this because they don't seek with his heart. And, and, and in like manner, a lot of them went into idolatry. And, and remember what, remember, an idol has a, has a mouth that cannot speak, ears but cannot see, eyes, I mean, eyes that cannot see, ears but cannot hear. They became like the idols that they worshipped. Unable to hear and see spiritually what the Holy Spirit was saying because they would not listen to it. They rejected it. In Revelation, here's their key. To, here's their key to hearing from God. In Revelation, one ten. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. You go on to read it. You know you find that's Yeshua's voice. But notice this. I was in the spirit. Now, if you have an experience, it's a little. I'm just going to explain it best I can. You bet. He was probably praying. He was probably praying in tongues. Oh, you don't have to, because that expression, that similar expression, is using it, using the, um, is using the Tanakh, the Old Testament, before any, before the baptism of the Holy Spirit was ever given. But it certainly helps you get there quicker if you pray in tongues. He's probably praying in tongues, and when you're in the Spirit, what it is is, it's like Paul said. It's like Paul said. 
you know, he, he didn't he didn't know. Was I in the body or out of the body? You're at this point where the spiritual, the supernatural world, the spiritual world, the unseen world is more real to you than the seen world. You're you're more aware of that than you're you're not you're, you're not at this point where you're not even aware you have a body. Well, yeah, that makes it really he, really easy to hear the Holy Spirit when you when you when you when you when you get there. And again, you get there by spending time in that secret place, time alone with the Holy Spirit, and praying in tongues really helps boost that. But so does fasting. It's the fastest way to victory. Remember. Revelation 2 7. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. He that overcomes, I'll give eat of the tree of life, in which is in the midst of the paradise of God. All right. So when we have an ear, when we're not resisting the Holy Spirit, we're seeking the Father, we're following Yeshua with all our heart, we'll hear what the Spirit says. But again, we got in that quiet place where we can hear because it's a still, it's a small, it's a quiet voice. He's not going to shout at us. First Corinthians 2, 6 through 10. We're going to look at, we're going to look at an, another thing about how the Holy Spirit reveals things to us. How be it, and what he reveals, how be it we speak, how be it we speak wisdom among them that are fully mature, it's a perfect means. Not the yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the prince of this world that come to nothing. We speak the wisdom of God in the mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which are which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the prince of this world knew. For if they had known it, they would have not crucified the Lord, Lord of glory. As it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor ear have entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them to us by his spirit, and the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Okay, remember the spirit's getting what it gets from God. No one knows the mind of God but the spirit. The spirit knows the deep things of God. And God reveals them to us through the spirit. Remember, the communication channel is father and son talk to the spirit, spirit talks to us. And the spirit talks to our spirit primarily first. As we become more sensitive to our spirit, the ears of our spirit can hear. But look what but look what look what the spirit reveals. It reveals what is written. This is Paul here. Paul didn't there is no Pauline, so-called Pauline revelation I heard about growing up, where Paul had some revelation that was contrary and external to the to the Old Testament into the into the Torah, the law. No, he had a revelation about what was already written. We're gonna we're gonna look at this a little deeper now. Ephesians 1, 17 through 19. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the fire of glory may be given to you the spirit of wisdom, revelation, and knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is hope is calling and the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. What is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? Okay, this is this is Shaul Paul praying for the Ephesians. But remember, these words are God's words to us. God wants us, wants to give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, which is the spirit of truth. Because that's where revelation comes from. Why? So our eyes can be opened up. Not our physical, not, not, not our physical eyes that see the natural world, but our spiritual eyes. They see into the they see into the spiritual world, the unseen world. So we can see things that they really are. So, and, and, and what I want us to see is how great our hope, the hope our calling is, and how great, how great everything is to, that He's done for us and through us. His greatness. Ephesians 3, 2 through 6. If you have heard the dispensation of grace, which is given to me towards you, which got grace of God, which is given to me towards you, how that by revelation made known to me the mystery, as I wrote before in a few words, whereby when we read, we may understand my knowledge 
in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of God, it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs in the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Okay. First of all, this grace of God, we looked at this we looked at this before in a previous one. When we looked at what Paul means by the law, Paul's own definition of the grace of God was this redemption from the curse for transgressing the law. So God's always had grace, but now we're now Yeshua has already paid the now Yeshua has paid the price before people had that faith in the Messiah that was coming. It was going to take away their sins, but now we have we have faith. We have faith that Messiah did come and take away our sins. And, and he made all this mystery. Well, this mystery again is a revelation of what's already written in the Word of God. I can show you numerous places in the Tanakh where it's very plain that the Gentile that, that God had planned to save the Gentiles. In fact, in fact, uh, various things like why it says we're like. Believers will be priests and kings. How, how Yah, some, because some Levites weren't doing their job, Yah would replace them with Gentiles. I can, I can show you this. It's in the Tanakh. But it was hidden to everyone's eyes. These things have to be spiritually discerned. And the Holy Spirit re, re, revealed it to them. Again, he didn't re, the Holy Spirit didn't reveal them some extra biblical thing that's whoo, out there. He revealed something that was already written in the Word. Already written in the word. Okay, we're gonna look at the last. We're gonna look take a, look at a few more ways the Spirit leads us. Romans eight five through nine, and they are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be fleshly minded is death, but the spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the fleshly mind, that's what carnal means, is enmity at war against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So they are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the, the spirit of God dwell in you. If you may not have the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So if you're a believer, if you're born again, the spirit of God dwells in you. You have to cooperate, though. Mind you, those who do not know the spirit of God are going to mind the things of the flesh. They, they do not have the mind of the spirit. The spirit is, is going to go through your spirit and talk to you and help start with your mind, getting your mind straight. Give you that mind, it's life and peace. And you know you have the spirit because if you're born again, he dwells in you, period. And notice, and, and we, as I've talked about before, the spirit of God's going to lead you to become more glory to glory, more like Yeshua, Jesus. And that means, which means you're also in that process, you become more and more obedient to the law. It is the spiritual body, is the spiritually minded person that is subject, that is subject to the law of God and can be. By inference, okay. Philippians 4, 16, 4, 6 through 7. Be careful of nothing but everything by prayer and supplication, thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which pass all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Okay, remember, this, 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 when you see a term like the peace of God, the love of God, it's talking about that supernatural fruit of the Spirit. So it's, it's, that, it's that peace that comes from the Holy Spirit which passes understanding. And notice, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you're going to have confidence because you ask God, but you're gonna. But how are you gonna know when you got an answer? When that peace comes upon you, and the answer you get may not make any sense to anyone to the natural mind. But you're gonna have. You're you're gonna have your hearts and minds are gonna be at peace. You're not gonna be in anxiety or worried about. It. I'm gonna give you an example of my own life. I took a. I, I got out of the Air Force. I took a job. My my my. my I left my wife and kid. Uh, in Monette, Missouri, my mother. I took a job here in Tulsa, and I got after after about six weeks, I lost my job, and I didn't know what to do. I I, I went and found a place for us to live, and I only had enough money to pay the down deposit in the first month's rent. 
the bare minimum to get in. I didn't even have enough money to buy a loaf of bread beyond that. And I was praying, I was crying out and praying about, it, and the Holy Spirit told me, go, go ahead and rent that place. And there was just such peace came over me. And that's how I knew it was really from the Holy Spirit. And I had no anxiety. You know, I didn't even have enough money to buy a loaf of bread. And it all worked out in the long run. So you need to be praying, get in that quiet place, Holy Spirit, and pray until you get an answer. And you'll know that answer because you'll have this peace. Even, the, even, even if the answer looks crazy, you'll have this peace about it. No anxiety. And if you've got some, keep praying until you get to the point where you're certain. When you're certain, you'll have the peace, always. And lastly, Hebrews 10, 15 through 17. Wherefore, the Holy Spirit is a witness also to us, as he has said before. This is the covenant I'll make with them after those days, says the Lord. I'll put my, mind, my laws, the laws from the Torah, in their hearts, and, I'll write, and in their minds I will write them. And their sins and the nickel I'll remember no more. And if you were with us before, when we looked at, when we looked at this in um, what did Paul mean by under the, under the law, we found that the, that the mechanism for that is the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit's going to write in our, our hearts, is another word for spirit. It's going to write in our spirit, because that's what the Holy Spirit talks to our spirit, in our minds. It's going to put those in our heart and our minds. We're going to start doing the things that are in the Torah and the law, even if we don't know about it. And uh, like my own life, I, re I never read, the, I never read outside the, I never actually sat down systematically read like the Torah, and the laws in it, until after I've been saved about seven years. No, not seven years, about five years. But when I started reading it, I learned, I, I realized a lot of this stuff I I had just not did or did do because the Spirit had led me. Because the Spirit's going to lead us to do what's in the law. He's going to put it in, he put the law in my heart. And it's in my mind. Okay, I, I hope all that makes sense to you. Uh, thank you very much. And until next week, shalom.